Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a grand solar minimum update Wednesday, October 19th, around 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time 2022. You're looking at the Iceland earthquake map, and it's showing that the seismic swarm has been, re has been reducing over the last few days, but there's still activity at Ostia. Grimsvolten, the Tiernus Fracture Zone, and the Reykjanes Ridge. We've got smoke all over the Pacific Northwest, but the big story, early season winter storm pounds parts of the Great Lakes. Snow totals smash records in Marquette. Keep calm. It's boom time. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. The winter storm brought frigid temperatures that when combined with the gusty winds over the relatively warm waters of the Great Lakes, well, it's record time. And let's take a look at the top snow reports. Marquette, Michigan, 18.1. Guile, Wisconsin, 18. National Mine, Michigan, 18. Th Lakes, Michigan, 14.4. And Champion, 14 inches. Now, some of these, well, Marquette, Michigan, smashed its record for the most two-day snows in the month of October. 9.1 inches fell Monday. An additional 8.9 inches fell Tuesday. And that was their lose day. While Mar Marquette does average 200 inches of snow per year, only five inches falls in October. The 18 inches has vaulted this month into the third snowiest October on record behind 1979 and 2020. Isn't that funny? Here are the winter weather alerts and some of the pictures. So absolutely fantastic record-breaking snow up in northern Michigan. As predicted, November chill places 100 million people under frost and freeze alerts all the way into Florida. Wait till, you, wait till we get to the forecast model. Now, the coldest air since the spring, ding, ding, brings a wintry wake-up call to most of the country this week, producing record-shattering snow and low temperatures. More than 100 million people will freeze, and they woke up Wednesday under frost advisories, freeze watches, and warnings on what was expected to be the coldest morning of the year for many people in the south, so... It's going to continue for a few more days of snow, amazing snow in the Northern Hemisphere. Let's walk it through here. Here is your Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. A little bit of snow in the Northeast, North, uh, Northern uh, New York, maybe a little snow in Northern Pennsylvania, and we'll walk this through. By the time we hit Saturday, Friday night into Saturday, a storm is going to be dumping down into the Rockies. Take a look at this. We have some of the highest five-day storm totals coming to Colorado. And the winds. Look at this. Look at Cuchara in Colorado. Forecast to have 92-mile-an-hour wind gusts between Saturday and Sunday. That will be your fun day. From Taos up through Crestone. And the San Luis Valley, you're looking at some record-breaking winds up to 100 miles per hour. The rest of the state is going to be gusting from 40 to 60 during this early winter storm event. And if we come over to the United States Power Finder, well, you're going to find some powder. And this is uh, what I put in here was the next five days for the United States. And... Colorado is beating out Alaska with Sheep's Head Cabins going to be picking up 27 inches. Wolf Creek, yeah, just 30 miles from here, 27 inches. Alta, 24 inches. I think that's in Utah. Silverton, Alaska Heli Mountain Guides at 24 inches. Snowbird in Utah, 24 inches. Brighton, 20 inches. Goose Lake, Silverton, Solitude, Eagle Point, Opus, Hut, Paradise. We're looking at some big totals on the powder map here. Yes, ski season has begun, and many of these resorts are going to open either this weekend or the day after the snow on Monday. So that will be your fun day. And we'll leave you links to all of the GFS models and those snow totals so you can blow your mind. Now, severe drought torments British Columbia a year after devastating floods, but the models are looking epic for BC. Literally four to eight feet of snow, and this is the total precipitated water. So we're going to look at the entire coast of British Columbia between 12 to 24 inches of precipitated water. That could be 250 inches of snow, ho-ho. 
And I think the drought is going to come to a rapid close there. Now, critical fire weather in the central U.S. and a storm coming to the northwestern U.S. starting Friday night into Saturday morning. Dry, gusty winds will bring critical fire weather Thursday into the northern and central high plains. You can see those areas marked in pink and the mid-Mississippi Valley down here. Air quality alerts continue Thursday west of the Cascades and into the northern Rockies due to ongoing wildfire smoke blowing up north into B.C. And we're going to show you that map in a minute. A storm system bringing colder temperatures and gusty winds, rain, and mountain snow will arrive in the northwest Friday morning to improve the air quality. But in the meantime, look at the hard freeze here in the entire east like a beast. And the highest elevations are going to remain warmer. Interesting, isn't that? That's how it works. If you're up high, you're down, you're above the pooling cold air, which is going to extend all the way down the entire panhandle of Florida and into northern Florida. So protect your sensitive plants. Now let's look at the wildfire smoke map. Holy macaroni. Still dirty and dark from Seattle to Olympia. And even Texas, the nexus of the Shemexis, the entire state in the haze. San Antonio, all the way up through Oklahoma City and Kansas. It's not looking good for breathing. Seismic update. No quakes of note. We have a 5.2 in Japan at 15.9 kilometers. I'm sure they felt that. We have a, a 5.3 in China, down at a deep depth in the middle of nowhere. We did have a quake in Ridgely, Tennessee, on the New Madrid earlier in the map, but it has since dropped off, which means it's more than 24 hours ago. Ho, ho. And you can see that the East African Rift Zone is also rocking 4.1 in the Republic of Congo. I want to play a bongo. Here we are at the whole country earthquakes in Iceland where we're looking at the whole country and you can see that there is an uptick in seismicity, albeit less than it was over the last two days. Let's take a quick look over at the Vatna Yokel Glacier where we can see Grimm's Volten and Astra to the north. We can see some earthquake activity happening in that region currently, but albeit very light. We'll come up to the Tiernus Fracture Zone, small to the north, and you can see that's where most of the earthquake activity in the entire continent of Iceland, uh, island of Iceland is happening, country. And one other stop at the Mildjörnjökull, mm, and this is where we can see the activity here at AFV Okel and potentially Kaf, Kafka, Kafla. So we're keeping a close eye on Iceland for you so you don't have to. Worldwide Volcano News Update. All is quiet across the world, normal activity. Nothing to worry about keeping a close eye on Iceland as we move over to space weather. And we see we have some flaring in the sea range. The only problem is that these are um, sunspots that are facing on the other side of the, <laughs> they're facing away from us. In fact, the sun is quite blank. We do have a new region that uh, has grown over the last 12 to 24 hours. Air Active region 3126 is now a decent sized sunspot, but we are at solar max and that's the only spot on the disk. As Discover Solar Wind is showing us, all is quiet on the solar telemetry. Look at the drop off in density straight off the cliff. The plasma speed has dropped down into deeply low 400 kilometers per second range. Temperatures dropping. Phi angle is coming off. It's now Earth to Sun. And the BZ calming as well. So all is quiet on the sun. Here's a fun article. The next pandemic may come from melting glaciers. New data shows. Analysis of an Arctic lake suggests viruses and bacteria locked in ice could reawaken and affect the wildlife. Well, what about the gain-of-function research that's making the coronavirus Hundreds of times more deadly. I think I'd be worried about that, wouldn't you? <laughs> now, let's take a look at this. NASA's Webb Telescope takes a star-filled portrait of the pillars of creation. And they are, wow! Look at these pictures. Absolutely mind-boggling. Now, many of the fraudulent astrophysicists call, call these stellar nurseries as if there's some gravitational collapse of dust that forms stars. 
they couldn't be further from the truth. They're completely missing the point. But it's beautiful to look at, so let's take a look at the James Webb's new view of the pillars of creation. And they are, well, spectacular. Now, I think I've downloaded this in high def and played it through for you. But let's just take a look as we peer out into some amazing footage of those pillars. Now, if you don't know, this information is not new. In fact, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel reveals some of the exact features we're now looking at with new space telescope technology. And I would implore you all to take a deep dive into the esoteric to understand better what I'm talking about. Now let's move on. Ancient DNA reveals the first Neanderthal family portrait, and it's amazing. They did a huge genetic analysis of the material found in this cave, and it is astounding. The Riverside hunting camp in the foothills of the Altai Mountains in Siberia was home to a tight community of about 20 inhabitants 54,000 years ago. And this is about uh, 12,000 years before their extinction event. And this family unit included a father, his teenage daughter, a young male who might have been a nephew or a cousin to them, and an adult female second-degree relative perhaps an aunt or a grandmother. And just the fact that we know this about a tight-knit community living in a single cave 54,000 years ago should blow your mind. And all the links will be provided below, as we always do. And as we like to bring you up to speed before we deep dive into a topic next week, not this week, this week we're going to be talking, oh, this week, on Saturday, holy macaroni, on our radio program Cosmic Catastrophe, Revolution Radio, the number one listener-supported radio on the internet at freedomslips.com, Studio B, noon, mountain time. Leah and I are going to be talking about the Younger Dryas Black Mats and the Rancho, Labrean Termination in North America, and it will be eye-opening. There are 97 geo-archaeological sites in the study we're going to share tonight, which came out in 2008, one of the first black mat studies that located all of the locations in, the, in North America, including two here on the East Coast. Look at that. This is one of the first papers coming out, and this will get you up to speed on what we will be discussing on Saturday, replaying Saturday night, prime time, on Magnetic Reversal News. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. I hope you got something out of the video. Become a Patreon and support the work we do. Please. We've lost 150 Patreons over the last two years, and we understand it's difficult to support the channel for some families. But many of you could buck up a dollar a month to get all of our material commercial free. We love each and every one of you. Thanks to the heroes that share this video. Be safe, and we'll see you soon. And that's a boom to knowledge. Mm -hmm.